This video was sponsored by Seed. Hey, what's up? Now, if you're watching this video and you haven't watched the last video where we built a suspension bridge, you might wanna watch that one first because this video is a follow-up to that video and it won't make as much sense. Or you can watch this whole video, see how we messed up that bridge, and then go back and watch the original video. The choice is yours, do what you want. But yes, it is true. After completing the bridge last time, I thought it was a huge success. I went to sleep happy, and the next morning I walked back out and I was staring at the bridge and our structure, and I noticed something was just a little bit off. And then I got scared because I realized we made a huge, huge mistake. But it's gonna be a lot easier if I show you rather than just trying to tell you. So let's look at some little models I made. All right, so I created these little models. No, they're not to scale, but they're close enough to give you the general idea. So we built this little guy, we built this big guy, and the idea was that we put a bridge in between the two. Now what happened is one of those classic things that makes so much sense after it happens, but I just didn't think about it beforehand. In my mind, we built these things pretty darn strong. As many of you have said, we've overbuilt them. They could stand up against a hurricane. But that's with downward pressure. If you get up on these and stand on them, they're not going anywhere when you push down. The problem lies in trying to put a bridge in between this span right here. So let me show you exactly why that's a problem. This is our bridge. And that was a suspension bridge and it spanned this void right here. Now in my mind, this should have worked. We have a really strong tower over here and a really strong sturdy tower over here. Many of you in the comments even said I way overbuilt these two towers, that I could have done it with a lot less lumber and it would have been just fine. And between you and me, before we put the bridge in, these things were solid and sturdy and they weren't moving at all. So we put the bridge in and I suspect that they're strong enough to span the distance and hold everybody up. But the problem is, as you walk across the bridge and you start to put force in here and the bridge pulls down, what happens is you can see the edge of these towers start to get pulled in towards each other. They're getting tweaked. And I noticed that when we first walked across the bridge, that this tower especially was moving quite a bit. Now the small tower wasn't really moving at all. The reason for that is, if you remember, we built a staircase on the smaller tower, which hooked onto the top and then it hooked onto a concrete pad at the bottom. Now because the stairs were bolted to this concrete pad, this tower really couldn't get pulled that way at all. So all the force was then driven straight to the front corner of this tower, which put a lot of tension on this front corner. So as you walk across the bridge, this tower wants to get pulled in this way. And that's where I noticed we had the problem. After stepping back and looking at both towers side by side, I started to notice that the front three posts on this tower in particular were just tweaked out of plumb just a little bit. So then I had to decide, what now? I've created this problem, how do we fix it? And for that, a whole bunch of different options started running through my head. So once I realized this was a problem, the first thing I had to figure out how to do was to pull this thing back into plum. And not only pull it back to plum, but keep it there so it couldn't be pulled out of plum again. Now, my initial thought was, well, the stairs worked really well on this tower to keep it from being pulled this way because it was anchored down all the way out here. So what if we did the exact same thing over here in the form of a tensioned cable that went down maybe to another concrete footing and some rebar? But the reason I didn't like that idea is because the load on this bridge, it's not constant or static. It doesn't stay the same. It's what you would call a dynamic load, meaning that it varies. As people walk across it, depending on how many people are on the bridge or whether they're bouncing, that force changes from tower to tower. And you can see this when I push on this bridge, you can see the force in the stairs change. It tightens and it loosens. So I was worried that if we ran a cable over on this side, it would do the same thing. As people walked across that bridge, that that cable would just bounce and this would still move back and forth with a change of force on the bridge. 
Not only that, I didn't like the idea of this thin cable running down where kids are going to be running around and possibly somebody might lose their head. Literally. So that solution was out. I had to think of something else. My next thought was to strengthen this tower itself so that it was so overbuilt and strong that it couldn't be pulled. And I thought about doing that in the form of some X bracing around the bottom framing. But the reason I didn't like that solution is I'm really still depending on the strength of this tower to keep things from moving back and forth. So if we put enough tension on this bridge, it doesn't matter how strong this tower is, eventually it could still tweak it out of plumb. So that left one more solution, which is the solution we're gonna go with and the one I think is gonna work the best. Now, as we already know, when you put force on this bridge, it wants to pull these towers towards each other. So what if we could create something that keeps these towers from being able to pull closer together? Now we have our cables of the bridge and they're actively trying to pull in towards each other. So we need to fit something in between this span on either side of the bridge that's not going to allow that to happen. Enter my good friend Rick from Smith and & Steel and some custom made steel beams. Essentially what we're gonna do, pretend this is a steel beam, is we're gonna wedge one beam in on this side of the bridge and we're gonna wedge another beam in on this side of the bridge. Now these are solid four by four steel tubing so they can't compress in this way. This will not only push our towers back into plumb, but when little Jason walks up the bridge and walks across it, you can see it can no longer pull those towers in towards each other, which will completely solve our problem and hopefully strengthen the entire structure as a whole. There's just one problem. This is very easy to do on a tiny little model made out of scrap pieces of wood. I can just pick up the pieces and slide them down in there. But you got to remember in real life, this span is over 15 feet wide and we're dealing with four by four steel tubing. I mean, these beams are big. You don't believe me? Come here. Look, I'll show you. See, look at these things. They're huge. And not only are they big, we have to hoist them 10 feet up in the air, spanning that distance. And we have to pull that one tower that's already built back into plumb. How are we going to do this? I don't know, but you're gonna watch us try. So next we're gonna go outside. We're gonna try and get these things fit in between those towers. And if the model is correct, this should completely fix our problem, push that tower back into plumb, and we'll be ready to actually start building the tree house part of this whole project. Wish us luck. So the first thing we did was paint our steel beams a nice satin black, you know, so they wouldn't rust, because metal does that. Then we hauled them up and just loosely set them where they needed to go. Now you can see by looking at how much those beams sit on top of the tower just how much those towers pushed in towards each other. Now we needed a place to rest the beams so we screwed some scrap wood down below so the beams wouldn't fall down and crush us or our little toesies. Unfortunately this was the easy part of the job. Hauling the beams up there and getting everything situated. The really hard part is gonna be prying these towers apart so we can fit the beams in between. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Hey guys, how you feeling? Well, I mean really, how are you feeling? Like, in your belly. You see, what a lot of people don't realize is that your bacteria levels and gut health in your belly is not what it should be. Now there's a ton of products on the market today that advertise being probiotics and will help with gut health but there's some flaws in those products. Number one, for a probiotic to work well, it also needs a prebiotic. And number two, most of those supplements that you see or the probiotics and foods, they die by the time they get through your stomach acid and into your colon where you actually need those probiotics and prebiotics to do their thing. Which is why I'm super happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Seed. Let me explain what makes Seed a little bit different. This is their DS-01 Daily Symbiotic. It's the first in Seed's pipeline of scientifically validated products. 24 strain probiotic plus prebiotic formulated for systemic health. And get this, it's engineered to survive acid. That's right, it's engineered for precision entry through the GI tract. 
You see, the secret is in their two-in-one nested Viacap. It's this little capsule here, and it's nested with both the probiotic and the prebiotic, and it's shielded from all your stomach acid. So by the time it gets through your stomach and all that acid, it's still viable when it delivers that probiotic to your colon, which is pretty sweet. So you're probably gonna wanna try this. I know from experience, it's made me a little more regular and my poops are much nicer. I know too much information, but this will deliver that to you. And if you wanna test it out, just use my coupon code bourbon to get 15% off your first month supply of seed and free shipping. There's a link right down there in the video description. Click on it and have better poops and better gut health too. You're gonna to wanna to try this. So how to pry two giant wooden structures back into plumb? That's the question. Well, why not tie a rope to the front of my Ford F-150 and just back up? I mean, it's not the worst idea I've ever had. Let's see if this works or if it's a total failure. There's the bridge. There's our steel beams. We need them to fit in that span. Let's put this thing in reverse, literally. So I hopped in my truck. Craig was on the lookout to make sure nothing creaked or cracked or fell down for that matter. And I started slowly backing up. As you can see, the bridge just gently starts to raise, meaning that that gap is getting wider and wider, which is exactly what we wanted. Pretty soon it was wide enough that that far beam, we could kind of slide into place, although it was still at a little bit of an angle. With our far beam in place, I slid the front beam down to see if we could fit that one in. But we were still a good two inches off. So obviously we still have a little bit of work to do. So with our two beams generally in place, I just decided to keep things simple. And I hooked a pipe clamp onto the end of our front beam and I tried to clamp it into place. Now this did spread the towers out enough that I could slide the back beam over just a little bit more. But then it got firmly wedged in place. So I clamped a piece of scrap wood onto it and I beat it with a splitting maul to see if I could get it over any farther. It moved a little bit, but not much. But I tightened down the clamp on the other side to see if that would give us more room and I, well, I whacked it again. But at this point, it just started to dig into the wood and I couldn't get it to move any farther. And we were at the end of the threads on our clamp, so I couldn't push the towers apart any farther with the clamp. So we decided to slide that front beam over to try and get it more parallel because the extreme angle was making it harder to get in there. Once we had it a little more parallel, we used the clamp again to try and spread everything apart. But that still wasn't working. So I decided instead of trying to come in at an angle, let's back this back beam out of there and we'll try and come in from the top. Because we don't know what we're doing and we might as well try a bunch of different things until something works. With trying to slide the beam in from the top, we were much, much closer to getting this thing to fit. So we kept fiddling around with it, lifting it up here, clamping it there, pushing it there, pulling it here, until finally, after a lot of fiddling and a little banging, I tapped it once and stepped on it. Everything fell apart and the beam slid into place. Whew. That was the easy one, unfortunately, because the outer one is still very, very tight. Which led to this pose, contemplative, thoughtful. How the heck are we going to get this front beam into place? Well, we could always try and back the truck up again. So I climbed back in the truck, backed up, and it did absolutely nothing. So then I thought, well, maybe if we reposition the rope so it's pulling just on that front corner. I climbed in, backed up again, and it still did nothing. You see, here's the problem. We're able to get the clamp on there and push it pretty close to the front of that void, but not enough to slide it into place. We still need to go about another quarter of an inch. And even when we go that quarter of an inch, there's so much tension on that pipe that I had no clue how we were gonna slide it into place. This was an issue. 
The only thing I could think to do was to somehow get another brace in there that was spreading the towers apart so that that steel beam was free for us to slide into place without all the tension and force being on the beam itself. But that meant we needed another brace that was at least 15 feet long. So we ran to the local lumber store and picked up this 16 foot long 4x6. It was really big and heavy and Craig made me lift the whole thing by myself. Now 16 feet was a little too long so we measured out until it was under what we needed and I cut it down with this cool worm drive beam saw. It's really just an attachment you stick on your skill saw. Next, I pulled the car jack out of the back of my truck and we screwed that to the front of our bigger tower. Then we wedged that beam between the jack and our other side and I tightened the jack down, hopefully to spread those two towers apart. It was working pretty good until I tried to tighten it a little more and crash. Everything fell down. Luckily, I was standing off to the side because I thought that might happen. So we tried again. This time we securely bolted the jack in place so that it couldn't fall down. Then we brought the jack all the way back down and we didn't want the beam to fall down as easy either. So we hooked a scrap piece of wood onto the bottom of the tower so that the beam couldn't come crashing down and crush our heads. This was much more secure and a lot less sketchy. So hopefully this time it'll work. So using the jack, we jacked the two towers apart and now our back beam could move freely. So we decided to mount this one just loosely with a couple lag screws so that it wouldn't be flopping around while we were trying to position our front beam. So once we got our back beam, you know, in there, we could start working on the front beam. We used a combination of clamps from the other beam to pull it, but mainly we just hooked a piece of scrap wood and beat this thing into place. I don't know what Craig was thinking during this whole process, but I was pretending I was a railroad worker in the early 1800s, working that heavy steel. It really helped keep my motivation up through this whole project. Pretty soon we got one side where it needed to be, and I secured it with some lag bolts, knocked the other side into place, and secured that as well. And whoo, I was tired. I thought this was going to be like a 15 minute thing and it ended up taking us the entire day to work this thing into place. With our beam securely in there, I removed our tension board beam thing and all of our blocking that was keeping things from falling on our heads. I got rid of that car jack I stole out of my truck, don't need that anymore, and the bridge was finally ready to test. Let's hope all this effort has solved the problem. My grandma wasn't around, so I had to use my wife and child to test it out. They are not quite as old, and it would be much more of a shame if they died, but hopefully the bridge doesn't collapse. I told them not to hold back either. I said, get up there and bounce. And boy, did they bounce. My son really loved this part. But as you can see, our plan has worked. With them jumping up and down, those outer towers are staying perfectly still. They're rock solid. I think we're finally ready to build our treehouse. Well, to build our house. I mean, there's really no tree involved. It's a house on top of stilts. Hey! Look at there. Now I know this wasn't the most exciting video I've ever done, but it was a very necessary video because now I'm confident in the strength of both of these structures. We can finally start building the house portion of the treeless treehouse. So follow along in the coming weeks, months, years, however long it takes me to get this project done. Stay tuned for our next videos and be sure to check the video description down below for links to products, our website for a bunch of merchandise, Patreon, all that stuff. I'll just be over here bouncing. This bridge makes it really easy to twerk. <laughs>